stay there and entertain there until his ultimate demise. Well, he's 89, uh -huh. so he doesn't have that much we could wonder. I don't know. He <laughs> could last forever. Right? He's probably been preserved. Uh -huh. and, but be, I think it would be great to have him around for just the stories. I mean, you never heard the stories he has. Yeah, he I, I don't done. know if that's worth an extra $150 million out of the $200 million yeah. that well, uh, he's asking. They say, I heard it needs some work, but I mean, he's probably heard about all the work that was done there before. So <laughs> how would you market that? Oh, my. Who knows? Um, I'd probably market it knowing that uh, if he needed to stay there, I think we'd have to add to that life estate that not only does he stay there, but there'd probably have to be a minimum of uh, 20 to 50 Playboy bunnies and parties mm. going on all the time. And then you'd probably get a lot more buyers uh, at that moment. I, I'd like to attend the open house. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on New Year's right. and Halloween. Right. And, well, there's know, 29 rooms and a four-bedroom guest house, so... Okay, uh, so there would be plenty of opportunity. To... Well, you know what would be really interesting is that if they bought it, if someone bought it and he was going to stay there, I guess the big question is, is it just, you know, Hugh staying there? Or is it going to be used for all the parties and everything? Uh, of course. Yeah, so... That goes without saying the entourage or the hangers-on or the wannabes or the celebrities like a Kato Kalin or something like I, that. I got to tell you, it'd be a pretty interesting endeavor, but I think at that price, I think he's uh, been smoking too much of his own stuff in that house if you think he's going to get that money. Well, we're going to follow that, and uh, I'd love to know who ultimately, what's that commission? $200 million? I don't know. This, that's a lot of zeros. That would be... Uh... <laughs> I'm trying to think 1% is uh, 200000 No, keep going. 1% oh, is $2 million. Wow. Yeah. 1% is $2 million. Right. So if you multiply so you didn't, that you by didn't cut your five, commission that could be for this deal, I hope. Cut commission? <laughs> cut co Are you using profanities on this show that's right. now? We can't discuss commission, but no, cutting no. it for $200 million. No, 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 no. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's exciting. When a more uh, serious uh, topic is, of course, today's the day that's been celebrated, and today's been Martin Luther King Day since 1983. Uh, and, of course... Uh, some of Mr. King, Dr. King's contribution uh, has led to equality and fairness between the races, and now it's been expanded into our fair housing right uh, to house, uh, anti-housing discriminations, Fair Housing Act, and the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act. So we're going to ask Mark. Uh, I know he is also a teacher of you. Um, before I introduce him, would you explain that, uh, the, your new assignment with, with your, regarding your new teaching position? Oh, sure. So um, along with rent, running my brokerage, the Mark Seiden Real Estate Team in Barcliffe Manor, um, I've actually been selected by a very well-renowned uh, coach, uh, uh, Vera Workman, who uh, owns and runs uh, Workman Success um, out of Utah. And they do one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching for real estate agents. So it's not just for companies. Actually, it's not for companies. It's really for the one-on-one -on -one agent all over the country. So if a real estate agent really wants to take their business to the next level and really does not know how to do it, that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to be coaching nationally on a one-on-one -on -one basis agents that want to step it up a notch and uh, do better in their business. Um, and we're you know constantly getting new clients uh, every day almost. Okay, I have one. Uh, we got the right guy. Uh, Mark is a Cornell graduate, okay, that's up in New upstate New York, for those that don't know. He did his postgrad at UC Berkeley. Uh, he has started very recently in real estate in 1993. <laughs> Scott, were you born in 1993? <laughs> oh, great, terrific. You just made it, okay. And he was the number one agent at Coldwell Banker for six straight years, 97 and 2002, and he owned his, uh, his own agency, Mark Stein Real Estate, in May, May 2003. Uh, he's been the top agent in 2004 to 14, that's 10 years, consisting of over 8,500 agents. And now it's up to 10,000. 10,000. Yeah. For selling single-family homes, and number one agent in 2008 and 2014, uh, the combination of listing, buyer side transaction. So I know who I'm going to for a loan. Um, and, of course, <laughs> that's why we're happy to have someone with these credentials and background able to assist us with uh, this topic. So now, fair housing, Mark, is a big thing now, would you say, and based on the expansion of some of the categories, would you give us even the categories? Uh, sure. Um, it is a very big thing, and unfortunately, there are real estate agents that are violating this literally on a daily basis. And there's, I'd say, of all probably the lawsuits or things brought up against real estate agents from the general public, it's probably more on fair housing uh, than anything else. So this really is things that agents really need to take seriously. 
Um, but there's basically, at least in this area, uh, three different categories, uh, if we could say, for the uh, fair housing laws. There's federal, there's state, and there's even some in Westchester County. Um, there's also different guidelines in New York City. And what I mean by different, I don't mean, you know, instead of. So if someone's doing real estate in New York City, they have to follow federal, state. They certainly don't have to look at the Westchester County guidelines, but they would certainly have to look at the New York City guidelines. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, those New York City guidelines are much larger than the Westchester County guidelines. Sure. Who are covered? What kind of classes are protected? Uh, under these big, uh, well, under federal, we call them the, the basics of uh, race, color, religion and creed, sex and gender, national origin, disability, uh, that's physical or mental, and familial status. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get into New York State. And remember, every state is different. They may have some that are the same, but in New York State, it's marital status, age, sexual orientation, military status, and now there's a new one for 2016, which I am sure we're going to discuss a little bit tonight. Um, and it's actually not by statute. So there's a new one in New York State that's by executive order by the governor, and that's gender identity. Hmm. So that's fluid. That's, uh, that's... I don't mean fluid, actually. I mean fluid moves. <laughs> it is. And again, that's not by statute or law. That's by executive order. So for all the attorneys out there, how that would be enforced and... What does that mean? Um, I'll be the first one to tell you that's above my pay grade, but I will tell you it is something we are not going to violate because I do not want to be the test case in New York State. Uh, and then there's Westchester County, um, and that's citizenship or alien status, uh, victims of domestic violence, sexual abuse, and stalking even, and even things called sources of income. Sources of income happen to be not... Um, if someone's getting paid, you know, uh, 1099 or getting paid W-2, that's not sources of income. Sources of income usually means uh, some sort of government assistance based. Uh, Social Security, SSI, SSDI, Housing Choice Vouchers, Section 8, and other sorts of housing aid. And a lot of that, believe it or not, it may not be for purchases, but it could be for rental. So everything that we're talking about for, for fair housing is for both purchase and rentals. That would make sense. So who uh, is subject to these rules? Is it, of course, just sellers and landlords? Uh, are uh, brokers are obviously involved in the transactions? Let me know uh, what a uh, for sale by owner should be aware of. To well, what extent does it apply to them? Well, actually, it applies to all for sale by owners. Where some things may or may not apply would be for landlords, depending on how many units they have. Um, now, again, for example, I'll give you uh, a good example. If um, someone is renting a house, uh, let's say this, I'll, I'll use the old little old lady rule. If a little old lady uh, is living in a house and um, she has a two-family house and she wants to rent the other half, she is allowed to discriminate on many of these, uh, especially sex and gender. So if she doesn't want to have another male living next to her, she's allowed to discriminate for that to being a landlord because due to her own feel of safety. Um, when it comes to purchasing, there are no exceptions to that kind of, of rule. So some male who's similarly feeble, shall we say, doesn't have that right to discriminate on the basis of gender? It, it, uh, well, yes, and again, he could, could also do that too, but you can't discriminate in only wanting the opposite sex. So, and again, this would be something that I would tell you if anybody really has any questions. The experts on the planet, uh, especially in Westchester County, is Westchester Residential Opportunities. They are in White Plains, and if you need a phone number, it's 914-428-4507. They are the ones that you would really go to. Um, and I can't tell you that I'm an expert on all the exceptions to the rule when it comes to rentals, but there are quite a few of them depending on whether you're renting Six or few, uh, six or fewer units, or over six units. When it comes to rentals, uh, for example, if you have an apartment building and there's seven units or more, <coughs> you are not a, a landlord is not allowed to discriminate based on sources of income. If someone has a two-family house and they don't want to take Section Eight, they have a right not to do Section Eight. So when it comes to exceptions to the rule, it's really the rentals that have. Some exceptions. When it comes to purchases, yeah, there are no exceptions. But you, you said two things that I found interesting. 
Uh, you mentioned people who are victims of domestic abuse or aliens. I think, you know, not like E.T., but you mean illegal aliens from other countries, right? That's correct, believe it or not. If they have the, if they have the um, income uh, and opportunity to purchase, you can't violate. Um, and especially for victims for domestic violence. And what does that mean? Well, again, some of the things don't really go into that much for purchase. But it may go into a rental. So, sure. uh, so here's the example. There have been some landlords that have felt that if someone's been a victim of domestic violence, they don't want to rent to them only because they're afraid that, that the retribution, that if someone comes in and now there's going to be violence at their place, and under the law, you are not allowed to, you can feel that way, but you're not allowed to react that way. <coughs> Okay. So, if but how you, do you, let me ask you this: How do you ferret that out? If you, you would, would a landlord be under some burden? Let's say you're a client, you're the listing broker of a someone with a two-family home. Would you advise them to ask questions that would um, adduce the information, such as, are you a battered victim? Are you what do you call domestic abuse victim? Are you not from this country? I mean, you know, how do you find that out? That's a really great question. And usually, what happens is, well, there's two things. One is, as an agent for the state and all agents are agents for the state, the answer is no. We can't advise our landlords or sellers to ask any leading questions directly to the other side to see if you can get that. That would be aiding and abetting bad news. Um, but sometimes people do just volunteer it. So if it's volunteer, the answer is I'm not going to present it to the other side because I'm not allowed to do anything you know, against. And I always tell people, here's the burden, which most people understand. If I have a, uh, a, a client and the client is black, would I ever tell the other side that, hey, I have a black client? No. Of course, everyone would say no. Well, the same burden holds true to everything that I just mentioned. So even though some may be, but I don't understand, I mean, would you say it, could you say it? And the answer is, if you wouldn't say that a client is black, if you wouldn't say that a client is Asian, if you wouldn't say that a client is Catholic or Jewish, then you also can't say that a client is anything on any of the lists. That I took. That I okay, so about. you wouldn't. So in those two examples, those those not stick out at me. You wouldn't ask the question whether someone is a victim of domestic abuse or violence or whether illegal alien. But if told, then you're under a burden to not let that be a reason that they couldn't be there. Well, that's correct. Like for example, under federal law, familial familial status, and that all has to do with whether people have children or not. So the answer is, if people want to know whether any of my clients have a child, I can't answer that question. We're single, right? Is that We're single problem? or anything. So there are there are people who say, but look, I really want my house to have some with children because I want the neighborhood with children. Well, it may be what you want, but protected is protected. And the burden that I always go is I always go back to the easy burden. If someone was a specific color, could you say that to the other person? And everyone says, well, of course not. Well, the say burden holds true to everything on the list. Hmm. And there's no, pardon the color thing, there's no gray here. It's black or white. I got it. Well, let's leave off on that. We'll have a quick break for our sponsors. Thank you. Have you ever been disappointed because something um, I also you read today that it's about expecting. So how do you know someone's two months, three months, expecting? So if you have a person under 18 that's expecting a child, how on earth would you ever know that? Some 17-year-old who's... It's not whether you know. It's whether it's, it's if the information is provided to you. So if I see a 70-year-old with a little bit of a, who's normally thin and a, and a big belly, you know, getting a belly, I mean, look, I could certainly say, oh, well, you know, if I was stupid enough to even ask, you know, congratulations, and they said, well, yes, I'm expecting. Well, one is I just got the information, but two is I can't divulge that information. It's against the law. It is so... I mean, contradictory to, to think about it. You have the duty as a professional to keep things confidential, but you can't share with your client who trusts you information that they really want to know. Why do they need to know that? See, I could play this game all day. Why do they need to know that? I don't know about need, but want. Definitely want. Oh, well, there's, listen, there's a lot of people want to know the color of the you person buying or family, renting. So if the baby comes, you and I all grown, except Scott knows that babies are allowed. Scott, I've had seller clients that have told me, listen, I want to know who we're selling to. I'm moving to North Carolina. I'm not even coming. Well, the neighborhood. Right. Well, is that, is that reasonable? They don't want to sell to anybody who's Jewish. They don't want to sell to anybody who's black. That's what their desire is. Is that okay with you? No, me, no. Well, well, 
the same is the same is the same. So the, the challenge is people have been beaten down since 1968 when a case comes to race and color and religion and a couple others. It's the other ones that they're newer that people just haven't been beaten down into yet, so they think it's more reasonable to possibly violate or why is it on no, You're absolutely right. One is, you know, we all know. The one is, it's been ingrained. I mean, I, you know, I, that's... that's I'll give you another example. I mean, they're even talking about alcoholism as a disability. What's it's physical or mental? But what, what's it, I mean, it's clinicians would argue with what an alcoholic is. That's not a, you know, like break, if I have a broken leg, that's an easy one. But what's an alcoholic? I don't know. What is it? I don't know. I mean, clinicians would disagree. So, welcome to the world of law. So, so if you're not sure, what do you do? Be quiet. Coming back. Yeah. Five seconds. Don't ask, don't tell. Maybe that's it. Hi, we're back with Mark Seiden. Um, as Mark and, were, and I were discussing just over the break, there are a lot of categories that uh, really are a matter of interpretation. Some of these protected classes, such as um, mental incapacity uh, or e even habits like drug abuse or so, might be covered. Uh, and really the burden is on the uh, broker to represent the, uh, the client effectively but not violate these laws. It is, would you say, Mark, it's a bit of a tightrope? It is a little bit of a tightrope. And, and what I always tell real estate agents is, you know, if it's on the tightrope, you be conservative, which means if, if you think there's any gray and you're unsure, then you make sure that you err on conservatism. I don't even know if that's a word. Mm -hmm. but, um, but just be conservative because if you go on the other side, it's much worse if you violate. Um, see, this is what I, when, when I teach this to people, I try to put things in perspective. Here's the perspective. We live in the United States. Do you know what's really great in the United States? You're allowed to discriminate. You're allowed to discriminate. I want to eat Chinese food. No, I don't. I just I don't want to go to Mexican food. No, I don't. I want to wear green sneakers. No, I want. I want to run around practically naked most of the time. That's okay. No, I don't. I want to dress up. There are very few restrictions in the United States. You're allowed to discriminate on who you want to marry. You can pick who you want to marry. It doesn't have to be race, creed, color. That's personal. But in the United States... It's a free-for-all. You can discriminate. Ready? Except on protected classes. Mm -hmm. So the federal, state, and county, since we're in Westchester County, has said, do what you want. If you decide, I'll give you another example. If you are a landlord and you don't want to have a musician in your rentals, because you think they're going to practice the trumpet at 2 a.m., okay? It's legal. You can refuse, <coughs> and it's not a protected class. If you decide that you're a landlord and you don't want to, to rent to musicians, it's legal. How about a lawyer? Absolutely legal. To discriminate against them. Sure. Would you like to know why? Tell me. Do you see anything on this list that I read? That profession is a protected class. No. There you go. That's why you read in New York City sometimes that co-op boards will deny and make it public. We are not going to, to uh, honor or allow a sale to actors. They don't want act any actors in their building. Even though they can afford it, they could pay cash, and they probably could pay cash for all the units in the co-op. It's not whether they are able... They don't want to because they have a fear of paparazzi that include that as soon as one actor does something bad, suddenly mm -hmm. there's going to be photographers all around, and they don't want to be involved. Mm -hmm. Profession is not a protected class. Unfortunately, trumpet players are not a protected class. They people who wear green sneakers, it's not a protected class. So what people need to understand in the United States is it's a free-for-all. Discriminate all you want, with an exception. Now... Employees, as, a, as an employer employee, they have a separate set of protected classes where a lot of them overlap, but a lot of them don't. That's another conversation you can have where there's employer employee. This comes to fair housing. Fair housing has its own protected classes. Mortgage companies, aren't they allowed to discriminate? I guess people are not qualified. Well, what's qualified? 
Meeting their guidelines. Meeting the guidelines. Uh, so someone wants to buy an $800,000 house and they only make $60,000 a year, is the bank allowed to legally discriminate against a person who makes $60,000 a year with no cash in the bank and not give them a loan for an $800,000 house? Yes. It's discrimination based on income. Mm -hmm. It's legal. Right. So discrimination is legal in the United States. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise unless it's against a protected class. These are the protected classes when it comes to fair housing. So as, an, as I'm sure an anecdote that you dealt with and your companies dealt with over the time, what happens when people ask about schools or crime or even the new hot topic is uh, sexual offenders living nearby? What, what, what is a broker? What should a do and what should a client expect if they say, how are the schools, Mr. Sidon? I mean, how are they around here? You know, that's probably one of the best questions that gets asked of real, uh, of me and re real estate agents. And I will tell you that agents, unfortunately, violate this all the time. How so? Because agents are not allowed to talk about the school districts uh, at all unless they have experienced a school district with their child being directly in it. And then they can talk about their experience in that school district. But if they ask you about what about the schools here, here, and here, and the answer is, they're all great. Would you like me to set up uh, a time for you to meet with the superintendent, su assistant superintendent, or here are four or five or six websites that you can go on to do your own research. But for people to say this school district's great, you know the school district is really not great. Well, why wouldn't the school district be great? I'll give you an example because I live in the Austin School District. I love the Austin School District, in case anybody wants to know. But the Austin School District is really interesting. If you look at the statistics, okay, on the, the average number of kids that go to a four-year college, it's lower than some of the other school districts. But if you also look at the statistics of how many Intel Science winners there have been, mm -hmm. semifinalists, finalists, uh, nationally, the Austin School District actually blows away, are you ready for this, every school district in Westchester County. Why is that? Democratic. They just have a, no, they have a really strong science research department, and they really lead Westchester County. So when someone says, well, the Austin schools are not great, great up on what specific criteria? Well, if you want to talk about the average number of kids going to a four-year college, it may not be as high a rank than other school districts. If you want to know the ones going to Intel Science Research, I guess all the other schools should close. So which one line of statistics, and there's probably 842 of them that someone can look at, do you want to look at? Mm -hmm. How many college level courses that you can get college courses? How many AP courses? And all school districts are very different no matter how they rank on another ranking. So what we tell people is if you want to know about the schools, here's a link to the school district. Here's a link to these uh, companies that rank school districts, but if they rank them, they have a whole bunch of different criteria that you can read. So, what's important to you? I see. And the same thing with uh, crime statistics, or how is it safe well, here? Well, that's safe? correct. And the interesting thing about crime is that crime is not a protected class, but if you kind of, it's a slippery slope. Because the, because if you start talking about crime, and then there's some neighborhoods that have more crime than other neighborhoods, but if in that crime, but if in that area, if, I'm not saying it is, if that area is a different demographic, well, now you're impinging on the whole demographic on, you know, race, creed, color, whatever. You don't want to go down that. So, again, if you want to know about crime statistics, here's the wonderful thing that buyers can do now. And I invented it with Al Gore. <laughs> the Internet. The Internet. Right. So, right now, you really don't need a real estate agent to give you any of that information. You can research anything you want. There's probably only about 847 websites that you can look at on anything that you want to research. So that's really out of the realtor's purview at this point. It should be. I'm not telling you there aren't a lot of them that volunteer a lot of information because they know that their clients want to help and they want to be there for everybody. But the answer is you can't. You should be there with the resource of where they can get the information. Right. But you can't be the resource of the information. Interesting. Yeah, and, you said that before. and that's where agents get in trouble. One topic I want to ask about is the advertisements for homes. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> oh, mean, boy, have I seen great right. ones. I, so give us some examples. I've seen Walk to Worship, and that means something. Right. Uh, I've seen Great but walk Family. To, but Walk to which worship? <laughs> right. Well, maybe those that walk to worship. Which worship? 
I understand. There's all kinds. Okay, People there worship. You go. They worship Starbucks. They worship Starbucks. Listen, I know my <laughs> wife worship work, worship Starbucks. I, I know. But there's when a, it says walk to worship, what worship? Nothing said specifically. Or a great family. Now, what about if someone is not of that religion and their worship is two miles farther? So is it walk to worship? Or are you now skewing people to say, well, if there happens to be a church or synagogue of that variety, well, now you're saying that, well, this religion of the people who should buy this house because you can walk to that worship. Really? Yeah, yeah. I can't wait till the Westchester Residential Opportunities starts knocking on your door. Well, what are some other uh, misstated or incorrect, would you say, uh, words or phrases were used in advertisements? Perfect for families. Oh, right. <laughs> Great family neighborhood. Lots of children. Now, I've had a lot of people say, well, Mark, you know, I have young children or we're pregnant or whatever, and we want... You see, a buyer is allowed to say what they want. And I want to make this clear. Buyers can discriminate however they want to discriminate. If they don't want to be around a certain race, religion, color, they're allowed to make that discrimination. They can even make that discrimination public to you. Mm -hmm. You, as a real estate agent, just can't do anything with it. So we get people all the time that say, look, I'd like to be in a neighborhood with a lot of children. Because we have kids. Because we have kids. We want to have kids. We don't have kids. We just love to be around kids. Whatever reason they want to bring up, a buyer is allowed to say, I want to be or not want to be near anything they want. We're just not allowed to help them where that may be. So when we have people say, well, look, you know, we really like to be a lot of children or we really like this neighborhood, are there any children here? What we say is take a half day off work, start at 7 o'clock in the morning, go park on the street, see how many school buses come and how many kids get picked up or dropped off, and I'd probably do it at the same time, somewhere between 2 and 4 when buses get dropped off, and you witness it yourself. Because to take it to the nth degree... What's a lot of children? Two, nine, Tim has five. Yeah, that's a lot of five children. Of my own. Right. So if someone only wants the three, three kids, they can just park in front of Tim's house and they're happy. But what about if they want 25 kids? So what I always tell people is real estate agents have to stop assuming that a lot means whatever's a lot to the real estate agent. So if Tim has five kids, Tim may assume that a lot of kids is 27. For someone who has one kid, they may assume that a lot of kids is nine. Three. So the question is what's coming off the buses? Stop attempting to be an expert of what it is. Be an expert of how people can find out. I tell clients all the time, ready? I can't answer that question. That would violate fair housing laws. But I'll tell you how you can find it out really easily. And my clients really appreciate that. As opposed to me saying, there are a lot of kids, there aren't a lot of kids. Because I'll repeat myself. What's a lot of kids? And you may tell them something, they say, well, Mark said there's a lot, there's like five. That's right. not a lot. And to somebody else, a five could be, well, God, if it's over three, I'm happy. True. So send him to go sit in the school buses. If they're willing to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on an asset, where their payments, if they're getting a mortgage, could be thousands of dollars per month, you can't tell me that they're so busy that they can't take a half day off from school. Right. Do your homework. And go do your homework and go sit on a couple of streets and watch the school buses pass by. But just don't get picked up by cops for doing that. Ah, well. <laughs> That's another. What about the folks, I mean, this is a big, very serious issue, those with physical disabilities. Uh, if you're a two-family uh, homeowner, just a kind of a, maybe a non-occupied uh, landlord like that, mm. although you don't have the right to discriminate on, against anyone based on their uh, physical uh, needs, mm -hmm. what happens if your house has stairs and... It's just not up to code as a new construction would be. Is a landlord required to modify the home to uh, suit everyone? You're really talking about rentals. I'm just, rentals, I'm yeah. This is uh, the answer is um, housing. Uh, some housing is exempt under the Act um, if, uh, if they're owner-occupied buildings or if they're buildings with four or few, uh, fewer units. So if someone so not is, commercial. It's, right. And remember, you know, if five families considered... Commercial, four families, still considered residential. Mm -hmm. So if it's four or fewer, and yes, there's someone who comes in with a wheelchair, the answer is no, a, a landlord is not required to comply with ADA laws, that's American Disabilities Act laws, um, to make the house uh, 
subject to them, or even a single family house, no, they don't need to. If it's more of a commercial thing, five families up, the answer is yep. Sure. Um, quick question, back to the yes, advertising. Um, the advertising was family room or master bedroom. Were there were there rules on that or, or you know, that's in a, the advertising? I'm glad you brought that up. You know, it's changed. Right. Um, there are times where people said family room, then family room was not allowed. So we had to play and call it a great room, a recreation room. But then family room came back because it was determined that if things were really, if a, if a saying was really pretty old and it was almost like a colloquial way of saying it, it's allowed. So family room was great, then it was bad, now it's accepted again. Even mother-daughter. Mother and daughter was at one point um, okie dokie. Then for years, I'd say for at least 10 years, it was taboo. Yeah. But now, if you really have something that has almost <coughs> like a, I don't want to say a separate Side apartment, water. but something that would be good if people are in the same family. Nothing that for two kitchens, but would be really kind of almost a separate apartment-ish area, mm -hmm. you're allowed to say mother, <coughs> daughter again. But I'm not telling you that's forever. That could change again. Who knows? Well, we had something, I think, we discussed privately at one point. Um, this is, you know, maybe the granddad of them all. In New Orleans, they have, you know, those... those Separate quarters are called. Oh yeah, you told me this. Yeah, what was slave it? quarters. Slave quarters. And that was objectionable to some people, but it was now all the rage. It's like your own kind of. Uh, you really were cool if you had almost historical home like that. Right. And uh, it was really, really debated. And people said, "Look, no one's offended. The buyers want it. The buyers are fighting for it right. because they get to have one when they're very few in a beautiful historic region." So, uh, but that's a real, real, you know. Uh, topic, how, what do you say to a seller who wants his house described in a certain way? And has to it's got to, it's got to comply with fair housing. So if we were in New Orleans and we went to, you know, New Orleans, you know, and, and found out if it's legal, if slave quarters is legal, we put in legal. If it's not, we wouldn't. Yeah, I would think so. Um, okay, let's take a quick break. Thank you, Mark. We'll come right back after these messages um, from our sponsors. Thank you. Is this okay? Um, so no, it's great. Great. Really it's great content. Um, mentioned that callers can call in. Yeah, I forgot to. No, we're also live right this minute, so don't say any F words or anything. We use three cameras. Tell them, Tim. Uh, Use an F word. YouTube, friend, YouTube, family, live, Frickadeller, uh, Periscope, and Meerkat. So happy. And then this has been shared on Facebook as well. So. Is this being out there. right now live on Facebook? At this moment. Wow. I, you know, so I have the face somewhere. for radio. I didn't know I had the face for Facebook. Oh, no. da -da -da. You do now. I just watched the social network Book again for like the five, fifth time. And it's 2010, so it's so dated. But I have a nephew who uh, was with, with it yesterday. It was grandma's birthday. He went to Harvard with Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg told him, hey, get on this thing. He's like, you know, there's a lot of chicks on here. He is in the first 250. And, and I said, so you have your same account when it was Harvard.edu as you had... A billion people later, he's in the first 250. Wow. That's crazy, crazy, right? I mean, that's got to be... And it means nothing. doesn't count for anything. But <laughs> he, didn't get, he didn't get any shares didn't with that, so whoop-de-doo. <laughs> he did not. Um, so what do you want to mention? Like, like so we had ads, we had discriminated people. I'm glad you hit the co-ops, because um, Nixon was denied. Howard Stern was denied. Pete Diddy was denied. We can talk about co-ops a little bit more, because... Co-ops. Thirty uh, minute thirty. Sorry. Uh, Co-ops still do Still to this day, co-ops do not have to give a reason. Because they're private, and I, but you know, Suffolk has changed it. Suffolk's the only place that tried and was successful in changing it. And I actually don't agree with that. I mean, it is private, and it can't be private when when you're talking about owning up ownership to the public. It's really not private. But that's up to debate. But we can talk about co-ops a little bit because most of the time that where where people really complain is on rentals and co-ops. Sure. But co-op is still a buying through, which involves a lot more effort. And it's a co-op board, though. I mean, they violate this all the time. Sure, but there's also, you know, go to a restaurant, those four people, those four people, the co-op board is made up of different people at every table. There's no uniformity. 30 seconds. So, that, you know, that's another. But, I mean, then again, you know, keep, this is New York-based. But we have some of our, let's touch on co-ops, because you met, you met, uh, Bronxville, Larchmont, Scarsdale are big. The only way, well, I was in Larchmont the other day. You're not getting large. For less than any for two hundred fifty thousand, that's a car. 
So that's my nice neck of the woods. It's a nice car, but they're there. <laughs> Let's I'll introduce that so good. Hi, we are back. Um, we're pleased to have Mark Side still with us. We discuss rentals, and in New York State and uh, areas close to the city, like Westchester and the island, Nassau County, and in the city, of course, uh, Manhattan, it, these are probably the biggest uh, source of housing, is co-ops. And co-ops, I know, are uh, shares owned within a uh, closely held corporation. Uh, basically, there's um, an ownership interest in, in the corporation, and then there's a lease hold. It's kind of like your fiction. Um, uh, uh, it gives you the opportunity to live within 14E. So um, these co-op co-ops are run by boards where, if I'm correct, members, owners are, are on the board, and they vote whether you're in or out. Uh, so, Mark, describe some of that process when people are buying a place. They have tell them they're capable, but they have to apply to the board, too, in one of their ju uh, judgments. Well, that's correct. So besides, you know, looking for a place and going to contract in a place and applying for a mortgage, um, there's a co-op application. And the co-op applications um, ask a lot of information. On the co-op application, I will tell you, it's all legal information. They don't ask you about race, color, religion, none of that's on the application. Um, and they are allowed to discriminate based on income, not source of income when it's governmental, but income. And there are, there are uh, co-ops out there that will tell you that you will need to take whatever their um, annual common, uh, excuse me, monthly common charges are, multiply it by 12, um, plus your mortgage payment, <coughs> and then divide all that, and then they have a and your income has to equal that or more. And some don't even allow any uh, loan mm -hmm. at all. Some need to be all cash. Cash only. That's correct. Yeah. So they're allowed to do any of that, and they're allowed to discriminate against pets as long as the pets are not based on someone's disability. And if I'm going to throw this in, there are a lot of now pets for mental disability, not just physical disability. So not your Labrador, but for to keep. But there are pets the that that if there's a, a some sort of doctor's note that really says based on this person's mental status that they must have a dog. That dog must be allowed just as if you are going to be selling or renting to someone who's blind, and they had you know a seeing eye dog. Right. But going back to topic, so a co-op says this application. So I want to make a blanket statement. Co-op boards are not allowed to discriminate based on any of the federal, state, or Westchester County, if you're in Westchester, New York City, if you're in New York City, fair housing laws. They are not allowed to discriminate. Would you like to know what the hole in the system is? Please. Great. If you're denied from a co-op board, at least in New York State, there is no law that compels the co-op board to give a reason for denial. So if you're a trumpet player, they can tell you... I've been picking on the trumpet player, yeah. so I hope... That, that no, no, uh, trumpet players, I do love you. Um, if you're a trumpet player and you're denied being a trumpet player because they may think you're going to practice at 2 a.m. no matter how much you tell them you won't, they can tell you that you were denied because of that, or they don't have to tell you anything. But the reverse happens. If they decide, if someone on the board decides to not uh, accept your application and to accept you, and it's due to violating any of these federal, state, or Westchester County laws, they are not compelled to tell you why you're denied. So if you're denied, you're denied. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have to prove they did discriminate against you because they can't tell you why. Not they can't. They won't tell you why they denied you. It's a huge issue in the co-op acceptance when it comes to real estate. Well, I know that Suffolk County in, in Eastern Long Island uh, passed the law that allows uh, at least consumers who are denied to inquire. Uh, that's not true in Westchester, so that's the first thing. And the second uh, is, I guess, if you felt discriminated against, you have to bring an action and attempt to compel someone to tell you why. It's scary. Um, I had a client who, this is a funny story, was denied. She called me crying. And I must tell you, she was a really former top model. And she put in her application, it was a, just around the mid to late spring. The pool was getting ready to open. There were three or four women on the board. There was one man. He said, I voted yes, but the four hens said, no way she walking around the pool this summer. And, and you know, you know so what the interesting thing is? 
She was discriminated against. Hotness is not a birthday. There you go. Therefore, it's illegal discrimination. She said they can do that. I said, yes, you've got can. a nice problem. You're too beautiful. Yep. And, um, you know, her fiancé kind of laughed. I mean, he's the lucky one, but he, they didn't get that part. They had to go somewhere else. That's correct. So, I mean, co-ops are a big thing, especially in our area, because we just mentioned off break that there are some really, I call them the train communities, Bronxville, Larchmont, Scarsdale, what else would there be, um, where there's co-ops? Really, that's Pelham. Pelham, for sure. Uh, New Rochelle. Even New Rochelle, mm -hmm. New Rochelle, but they're not the big Bronx with Scarsdale, Larchmont, right. uh, Scarsdale. So where, and that's the only way into those schools and those really tony communities for less than it used to be 100, 150. It's really like less than a quarter million dollars. Correct. You can get maybe a two bedroom. Maybe. Right. So now you're getting into those schools, into the town, into the shop, into the, you know, cool club, and you're not spending a million and a half dollars. Right. So I know that Garth Road and Scarsdale. So that's why these communities will always be co-op driven because it's the first. Would you say it's the first-time buyer? The you know, it can be entry level for those who who are not loaded compared to what it takes to get into that neighborhood, and that could be anything. So you know, yes, yeah, spending a quarter million dollars in Larchmont is probably nothing in Larchmont. Where I'll talk about Austin and Barcliffe area and in Austin, you know, you can get a you know you still can get into a house in in a condo, but there are co-ops. In the Austin area, that you get for fifty, seventy, and ninety thousand mm. dollars. But we have had our share of clients who've been accepted by a bank. They have received their mortgage, and who's more income discriminatory than a bank these days? Right, a bank. So if they got accepted by the bank, why won't the co-op take them? And there's been quite a few that have been denied. Well, you know, there's also as you drive on a Garth Road or a Larchmont. I live in uh, one of the I think it's called a colony. What's particularly disturbing, clients don't know this, is you like that building, you like that building. Well, that building comes with these four to six crazy people. That building comes with another. There's no uniformity. It's not the American League or the National League. It's no FICO. It's these people might have a bad day or might be um, wanting to go on vacation. They don't even meet in August. So, you, I mean, from a buyer, it must be particularly frustrating where each building has its own set of rules and nuances and gray areas. Well, that's why in New York City, there's actually real estate agents that only do a couple of buildings. Sure. I mean, they're, they're, it's their building. And that's their value proposition. Yeah. They help. I mean, Well, they, they know the co-op board application and the people they like to the back of their hand. So they'd be the first one to be able to pre-screen and for whatever reason, hopefully not discriminatory, oh, yeah. hopefully, mm -hmm. they'll let you know whether you're getting that building. They're taking the lunch. But I mean, what's just does that happen? Do, the, do typically the brokers assist these first time or even these interested parties in buying co-ops? Yeah, they help buy the co-ops. A lot of them may not really understand the co-op application. They really kind of, oh, that's your attorney. Oh, we don't know anything about it. But <laughs> right. the agents that do quite a bit in a building, you know, I've helped people get into a building uh, in my area where, actually, I have two of them last four or five years, where they actually were in contract, got their mortgage, but got denied by the co-op board. Um, I happened to get them as buyers. They really wanted to go in that building. We went into contract again. One of them was actually on the same unit. I helped them with their co-op application. Yeah, they got approved. Well, okay. It's nice feather but here's now. the good news. That means they weren't denied based on any fair housing stuff, because I'll tell you, that hadn't changed. But the way that the co-op application and how they put in their income, and, and not that we skewed it wrong, they actually put it on the application wrong the first time. It didn't so show didn't, strong they enough. They did not give themselves so enough credit. They didn't give themselves enough credit on, on all the stuff. So when we really did the co-op application, said, look, you really did it wrong. You, you, you messed yourself up. You really have this kind of income. Oh, then they went through. Hmm. So if you really understand the process through the co-op, you can get through. But I will tell you, the co-ops are pretty, what I call, the only legal way to illegally discriminate. Is the co-ops. Sure, and, and you know, the irony behind co-ops is it was they were made to discriminate. They were made in the 40s, because they're all these, pre, you know, just uh, or even pre-war or just after the war. They were made to keep out people that they did not want in. That's correct. For whatever reasons in Manhattan. So now it's, and think about it, they've kept this up for 75, 80 years now. But the world has changed. Yeah, I mean, it might behoove a buyer in order to avoid that process. To buy a condo? <laughs> yeah, to buy a condo. Uh, but yes, but in Manhattan, there's only like 10 or 15 percent condo, and their prices are insane. Um, to find out maybe more about the board before just looking at the unit itself. Uh, you know, I, I tell you, and it's, that's probably a great thing to say. I mean, if you're going into something like that, you should probably building shop 
before your unit shop. Absolutely. Because mm. there's even co-ops near us where we know that there are some boards that are more strict than others as far as just having minimum income requirements, where it's more than just what the bank would uh, approve. So if some if a bank would say, look, we'll give you the loan if you're putting 10% down on this $55,000 co-op, so I'm sorry, on this co-op. So if you make fifty or fifty-five thousand a year, that's okay. But the co-op may say, no, based on our formulas, you have to make seventy-two thousand a year. Now that's legal. Sure. That makes so sense. so if the co-op wants seventy-two thousand a year, and you know that up front, why would you go through the whole process if you make sixty-one? Because the co-op board's not going to allow you, and has nothing to do with fair housing. So yeah, I would tell you, you know, building shopping is probably a good thing to do before you start walking in all the units. And I think your position will be the strict minority position amongst brokers. They, they, let's go shopping and like they see what's available. They would never blow off a, a unit um, that is available to fit their client's interests. Well, if it fits their client's interests, but but the the agent really needs to know whether it's going to fit the co-op's minimum requirements. And again, outside fair housing, and there's a lot of th things. And again, if if a co-op has no musicians. No lawyers. I can understand the no lawyers. They write letters. I have a um, problem, sure. You know, but, uh, you know, if they have that, then why bother? The cops always have the no bicycles in the hallway rule, too. Have you noticed that? Well, the mo that's because most co-ops are actually usually one building with a lot of units, so there's a lot of individual people kind of converging on this one common area. In condos and stuff, it's a little different, but condos have issues with cars and parking. You know, they, they all have issues. It's a homeowners association. Right. I had, um, when I left my co-op in Larchmont, they accused me and my then-girlfriend, now wife, of harboring an illegal dog. And we had my sister-in-law's dog about three times. She peed on the lawn about twice, and they wanted to hold back his security. I said, the dog does not live here. Yes, it came here, and I had to fight it for a day to get the money back. It was crazy, but they down to the dog, they were focused on if they made a burn mark on the grass. Their grass. It's their grass. <laughs> Their grass. Yeah, we're not talking about marijuana now, are we? No, no, it's, it's their grass. It's their grass. No, this was a uh, turf, whatever. It okay, was, uh, grass was exactly. So I look, thought, I thought we were changing the Colorado marijuana law. I thought, I thought suddenly that's should. legal now. That's legal yeah. now. Yeah, that's another thing. That's you know, we're looking at one more topic and uh, that it, it's changing. And look, this is a very important subject, and it's interesting that as we get more of a progressive view, what do you think about this juxtaposition? As we get more and more progressive, there seem to be more and more protected classes or individuals. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Westchester County, I think, added, and don't hold me to this so if I get it wrong, but I think sources of income, I think that's less than five years old, I think. I could be wrong, but I know that's one of the newer ones. And in New York State, gender identity is new for 2016. Well, that's, that's but remember, that's not law. That's by executive order. Okay, but we had, Scott, how much time? Uh, three and a half minutes. All right, so let's spend two and a half on, on that. Well, how would that be handled if that's such a, would you have a right to ask as a landlord, maybe with or without a broker, how the prospective tenant feels that day, more masculine or feminine? I mean, I'm dying for this to really happen. I, I, I couldn't answer I that. wanted this to happen in your brokerage. Yeah, I I, to, exactly. I'll just say, we can't handle this. We just closed for the day. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's about feeling that. I think it's probably more for the Caitlyn Jenners of the world. That you mean some kind of official uh, things have happened? Right, or, or uh, I, I guess so. This is so new, I don't even have all the, pardon the pun, the black and white answers. Wow. I don't know. This is really new. You know, what is the, what's the legal definition of gender identity that the govern governor now came down to with executive order. Well, when you let me know... I'm look at the procedural history of that. I believe it's legislation. Maybe it's just an order. But, you know, let's really quick. What are the damages? What's the downside? How could, what would someone, if they claim they were harmed, what, are there statutory? I mean, what could well, they, they, you'll be sued. So the question is, it's probably be up for the courts to decide what the damages are. So whether it's monetary, whether... You know, they lost out on that, and that was only 1400 a month, and now the next best thing is now 2100 a month. So, you know, who knows? Compensatory. I don't you know. know. That's a really open area uh, of what what is the exposure liability that the landlord or even the seller runs. Right. Well, that's even the thing with, like, with military status. I mean, a lot of people wanted to discriminate against the military because they can go out to, you know, serve, and who's going to be paying rent? Well, unfortunately, you can't worry about that. You can't discriminate against people with military status. So there's a lot of things out there. It's very interesting, let's put it that way. I'll tell you, this, is, this must be the field that consumers have the least information concerning 
uh, the brokers have a lot more responsibility than I think they're even aware. Oh, that's very true. The broker, I mean, I know you as a broker, but what would you say the general, I don't mean any of your competitors or maybe those in other states, uh, do brokers spend enough time on training their agents? Are agents equipped? Not on this. Not even close. The, most of them will know the race, color, religion, sex, but when it really gets down to it, not even close. Wow. That's a real potential liability hotspot for... Uh, and it can harm everybody. Wow. And especially when we're in our new age of enlightenment and... Um, the kinder, gentler nation, we're, we're wondering, uh, you know, there, there's a lot here. Is it one more minute? So I want to thank Mr. Seiden, Mark Seiden, for coming out. He's uh, an asset to our real estate communities. I'm, I'm sure your clients appreciate your expertise and your knowledge and your willingness to share. We do, too. This is the kind of thing that we do at the Real Estate Revolution. I know Victoria would be proud of the uh, work we did tonight and getting this quality, competent information the type of information that consumers can really use. They learned a bit, um, and we're going to have this up on the web. And, Tim, you want to say, how can we reach you, Mr. Seiden? Uh, the best place is my website, www.homeman.net, H-O-M-E-M-A-N.net. .net. You can reach me, 914-879-8411, Scott Porcino. Uh, Tim, where will these be found on the web? best place to find it is homesearchtv.com and re slash revolution. And that's in the homesearchtv.com backslash? Backslash revolution. Revolution. That's R-I-V-A, Lucian. And we, uh, until next week, we will have a Jay from Zillow on. Thank you very much. Take good care. Good. That was fun. All right. That's it. I talked too fast. You did a great job. You're going to get the video, too. We do this every Monday. Yeah, take one.